Welcome to Shape Language. Today's guest is a lead character artist at Insomniac Games. He's shipped titles like Ratchet and Clank, Sunset Overdrive, and Marvel Spider Man. He's a kick ass soccer player, a Brazilian barbecue master, and he's one of the most optimistic and talented character artists I know. Please welcome Enrique Naspolini. How are you doing, dude? <laughs> <laughs> the crowd goes, goes wow i like how you started applauding for yourself <laughs> myself <laughs> that, i don't that wasn't you that was the whole audience we have behind us right yeah we are yeah, here yeah. uh with a live audience and insomnia games <laughs> so dude hello, hello guys Should Should I I thanks wave? for coming on Should yes wave? yeah absolutely <laughs> getting the vibe across so, dude, how do you become such a talented, incredible artist? Where does the story begin? How do you get so spectacular? What's your story? <laughs> Start day one <laughs> of day preschool one. One, and lead uh, us through. July 1985. <laughs> That's right. Take you back. Uh, well, I, I don't know, man. Yeah, like, it, it's, it's a good question. I mean, I think I could start at multiple points mm. start anywhere you want i mean well i think i think a good a good starting point too could be how long have you been at insomniac specifically mm. uh okay uh insomniac i've been almost uh seven years i think it's six and a half wow now. yeah wow and recently got lead position on yeah. the character team which nice promotion awesome. congratulations thank you yeah, yeah. So, so uh like as before that how long have you been in the industry like what was it like starting Before from the industry Insomniac? to getting to Insomniac? Um, I was already like in the industry for I think like three years, not yeah. a lot, but yeah. Um, yeah. So like in total, I think now it's like ten. Ten years. Ten years. And you started in Brazil? Uh, no, I started here. Yeah. <laughs> nice. uh, I, yeah, in Brazil, there's not really a lot of like opportunities for that, especially like like where I came from. I would have to. I mean. I would have to to move to another city, which is, I mean, it's not as, it's not as uh, much different than move to another country, right? Mm, I, mean, mm-hmm. I mean, probably less. So, but I mean, I in Brazil, I always liked a lot, like where I lived. Mm. I wouldn't have lived in another place if I had to stay in Brazil. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I really like the city. You to stay there. Yeah. So I wouldn't want to go to big cities there in Brazil, but like when I, when 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 it came to like. To, to go to another country, I was like, oh yeah, why not? You know, yeah, yeah. And I was I was really into it, you know, like. And then when I got the opportunity, it was like I didn't didn't even think twice, so I just went for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one of the things that amazes me about your story is that we are constantly told as students that it is such a hard industry to break into, and then I hear then, about somebody then, coming and then from teachers tell you that you have to compete with foreigners <laughs> as well yeah. well yeah. yeah but i'm thinking about actually being a foreigner and how you have this extra obstacle of the visas and of not being able to network nearly as easily mm-hmm. i mean for us to have all of those obstacles of becoming a character artist but still living in the u.s certainly it's just that much easier mm-hmm. so, well I, I don't know if it's really easier I, I i'm not gonna say oh it's easier for you guys than it is for me but i i mean i i, I mean internet is it's here you know for everybody right so mm-hmm. like it's up to people to make connections over the internet i mean i guess it might be easier for you guys to go physically to some like job fair or like gdc or things like that mm-hmm. right but yeah um i think uh i mean at, le- I, at, at least I, I think that being a you know a foreigner you know i i always felt that i had to you know work i don't know i don't know if harder but i I definitely have to you know you have to go above you know and beyond to get noticed you know right because you're already kind of in the disadvantage of being outside of the country and you you know it's like you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So did a lot of your initial su- success and recognition come from posting things online? Were you really active on forums? What yeah, I, in the beginning, plan? yeah, I was uh, very active on, you know, Zebra Central and some, uh, you know, national, like local in Brazil forum. I think I was, yeah, a few forums. Uh, 
Or was that kind of led to your first? Uh, job yeah, I, yeah. I mean, kind of did, right? Because I mean, you, you started making contact with people, and mm. people contact other people, and then you know, so things happens, and uh, I think, yeah, I I, I got this. Uh, I I actually started doing like some like indie. Not, I wouldn't even say too much indie. I mean, you can, I guess you can call it indie projects, but it, it, uh, it was more like people like just getting together and trying to make games, you know, mm-hmm. like hmm. like on their homes, you know, yeah. like side projects. Kind yeah, of yeah. yeah. So it started like really small, and then and then I was still doing more like work on my own portfolio and also like going to college as well. Yeah. So <laughs> busy man playing yeah. soccer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, actually, when you're in college, you, you have a lot of time. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's true. I, mean, like, I don't feel like I was saying that a lot when I was back in college. I think it's changed no? now. I mean, especially when, like, like for, for my college, and I think yours was very similar, it was like you didn't, it, you did have free time, but you were almost pressured to spend that free time working on homework or creating things. Um, whereas, like, I know, like, Back in the day, my dad was like, college, I had free time out the wazoo. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it, I don't know, maybe it's just, maybe it's just our specific schools, but I feel like maybe yeah. it, it's changing a little bit nowadays. But um, do you think it's, it, it's busier now? Probably. Not I busier, like, but yeah. I think they stress the competitive nature mm. of this industry more. And it, so it scares students into, like, not having free time, if you know what I mean. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I wish I would we played more soccer, had more free time, <laughs> spent time doing healthy things. Uh, no, yeah, but I, I always felt like I had, because like those, during those four years, it, you know, like that's basically when I got into college to actually to something different, right? It's not, it wasn't for like character art. What, what was it for? It wasn't even like for 3D or anything. It was like for graphic design. Okay. So I have a bachelor in graphic design. Nice. And was that because like bachelor you... Degree. Did you have, because at, at a point, I also was going to do like a bachelor's in graphic design or something like that, because I didn't think that there was any other option. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I'm, and I was lucky enough to find something that was like game art or whatever. But I'm sure I, when you oh, were you in still, school, you like, still, you still to this day, you see you were str- like not struggling, but like not finding like good options for a game. It's getting better, but it's still not like, like most universities, I would say, don't have uh, an entertainment art or like anything like 3d art like pipelines at mm-hmm. all so if you're at like a university you're probably going to be stuck in like fine arts or graphic design oh, I see. unless you go to like the highly expensive highly specialized schools to oh, find uh, like, like more stuff so did you do the graphic design because that's like kind of the only thing that was kind of <laughs> close to what <laughs> yeah. you wanted to do yeah yeah I, yeah that was the only thing that was there to for me to, to do uh mm. I mean, I, I always been more like leaning to art somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, so I kind of got into graphic design. Uh, um, you know, I could have, I could have been, you know, in the, in the past, I could have been doing like anything, like websites or mm-hmm. or like printing stuff. I don't know, like mm-hmm. a company. That's what we learn, right? Like on the yeah. graphic design stuff. Like it, maybe it's like some product stuff as well, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was learning that, like, in, yeah, sure, but, like, on my, on my, uh, on my free time, I was getting to 3D for some reason, like, I, I, I don't know, I, I tried, like, in the very, in the very beginning when I started college, that's when I also got into uh, 3D, because I, I, I tried a, uh, a software, and I, like, I was like, oh, wow, this is pretty cool, you know, I was hmm. doing some, like, spheres and cues. Yeah, <laughs> as we Sick. all do. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, and, and so like, you know, for four years, it, it, you know, I didn't really, I, you know, I didn't really have to work, right? Like, mm-hmm. so I mean, for four years, I could train myself. It was like free time that I, I, you know, I used to to do my own like learning and yeah and portfolio you know so. how did you how did you find 3d art did, were there people around you doing 3d stuff and you were like oh what's that actually or, 3d art yeah yeah um so like a moment you stumbled across zbrush or maya for the because games time. were games games were already there right so like okay uh, so you were playing games 3D, and like, yeah 3d games and things like yeah that? yeah 
I I I, I liked I, you know I, when I when games start to become 3D, I was like, oh, this is so cool, you know. They were super shitty, but you know, it was like, <laughs> wow, they were 3D. You know, you can actually like rotate around characters and things like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, mind blowing but stuff. <laughs> I no, I uh, think I like I said, I I tried this software like a 3D software. It wasn't even Max, it was like something else, like totally like forgettable. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, it got me into it. In and then like when I, it was a simple 3 like 3D software, but. Uh, when I got like a, a com better computer, that's when I could actually like run 3ds Max. There you go. That was like 3ds Max uh, six or something like that. Wow. It wasn't even like yearly edition. So yeah, opening uh, up a whole new world. Yeah. So I'm curious when you're talking about all this free time and you know being able to do things like soccer and these sort of extracurriculars where. You know, in our time in school, we're, we were just kind of head down focused working all the time, or at least that was what our professors wanted us to do. Yeah. Do you feel like students today who take that route, who just focus on the art, miss out on other things that are actually that would help them with their careers? Like we've talked about in the past, like how important it is just to have an interesting, fun personality for actually being in the industry. Mm -hmm. Were there other experiences that you had in school or clubs you were part of or just things that you did that have actually helped in your career or, I mean, maybe just your life as well? Uh, like extra? Mm, I don't know, man. Um, like if... Um, I, I always, I mean, like... like I can't. It's 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 a, it's a good question, but uh, the thing is, like again, like my college, you know, course wasn't exactly like towards character, mm -hmm. so I I, I kind of can say that the call like the, my my uh, the you know my uh, the, the time I spent on college helped me with. With, sure. with the you know what I mean I know you're trying to where you're trying to ask your friends like like but that I think that applies for like somebody that's actually like on the on a game just like or a game art mm -hmm. uh, course right mm -hmm. in my case since I wasn't necessarily on that area I was like something doing something else I I, I, think, I always thought that like that that's what kind of that was the extra thing separate from doing character art that kind of uh, influence like not influence but like kind of helped me like in the background like there's a lot of stuff you learn in the graf graphic design that gives you a lot of sense of like you know art and, and yeah the fundamentals yeah fundamentals yeah, yeah. And, like you know design you know basically design so uh but like outside outside of all these things um uh, i don't know if there was anything that really like helped me other than like yeah, you're just trying to get in contact with people around the world, like, you know, through the internet and just getting out there and mm -hmm. talking to people, you know, even like in another language, I wasn't like so great, but. Yeah, because you're, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Portuguese is your primary <laughs> language, correct? Yeah. 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 So when you were trying to get, uh, like kind of break into character art, uh, what was it like, like networking in with people in a completely different country? Who spoke a different language? That like, seems what was so that like? challenging. <laughs> it I does can't sound even imagine. <laughs> overwhelming. <to do> <laughs> uh, how was that? Yeah, how was that? Um, it was. Uh, it was interesting. I mean, it was cool. Uh, it, it was definitely not as 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 uh, it's never wracking as like actually talking. Mm. Like, like it was always like you know texting, uh, yeah. emails, and like uh, forum messages. So it's like easier to you know look for you know corrections spell check yeah, yeah exactly right. yeah, yeah. yeah so it wasn't as as bad like as speaking in person which would be a, a bit more like very challenging so yeah a lot happened in during uh, like you know with texting so that's mm -hmm. good yeah on forums and i was just not like i i mean i i some some of some of it was like you know, I, I getting in contact with people for some reason, but other times were, were like also people getting in contact with me, right? Because mm. I, I mean, I was basically like exposing my <clears throat> my work, and people would comment like, 
comment, like give them comments or they would like get in contact, like in private messages and in, in saying, hey, can you, you know, you want to participate in this thing or, oh, you know, cool. that's how I kind of got into, because I, I, I was just doing my own thing. I yeah. wasn't planning until like, I wasn't planning to do anything about it, uh, like, pro, like career wise until I finished the graduation. Right. Like, right. But uh, like people that I already had contact with, they 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 kind of like uh, kind of worked as a connection between uh, you know me and the the studio, like some studio there and in Florida, right? And then they looked at my stuff and they oh yeah they, they offered me a job. Wow! Even and before then... even before I got graduation, even before I, I finished college. So is that, did you like hang on to that opportunity and then when you graduated, you made the jump and, and came over, out to Florida or was? Yeah. Finished? Okay. Yeah. Because I still had to finish college. So sure. it, that was like six years, six months before I finished. Okay. And I said, well, in, also in my case, I needed uh, the, the bachelor's degree to get a visa no, anyway. True. So yeah, I had yeah. to finish anyway. So I went back, finished it and they... Luckily, they waited for me, so they brought me back. <laughs> Came right on out to Florida. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So how, how long were you at that first place? Uh, to one year and a half. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And then, it, and you said it was three years between when you went there to getting to Insomniac? Well, I went to another place after that, right, in Florida, which where I stayed another two years. Okay, and then that's and when I came that. to something like yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Well, speaking of starting off the career, I wanted to ask you this question, which was: Now that you have gone through every stage of your career, you've gone from the beginning all the way up to a lead. Could you give us but two there's more stages? <laughs> well, I want to hear about those too, but I want to start off with asking if you could give a tip to somebody who is trying to make that leap from being a student to getting their foot in the door. Hmm. And then if you could also talk about how somebody who's a middle, mid-level artist, somebody who's now actually working in the industry, how they start to work their way up the ladder like you did, hmm. what would you say to people in those positions? Uh, well... You know, for students, I guess, uh, it, it, like I said, you know, like if you are in a four year, you know, college uh, course, I mean, you should use that time, you know, to, you know, practice and, uh, uh, you know, just experiment and, 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 you know, get better at what you're doing. And to like, so to make sure, like, when you graduate, you're like, you're ready, you know. Mm -hmm. That's the time. That's the time to, you know, to really, you know, bust your ass and build some portfolio. I guess bust yeah. your ass, work bust hard. Your ass. Yeah. Uh, right. And that's when you have all the time to do it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, some people might start working and they have more responsibility. So it depends on the person. But mm. I think for yeah, for students, it's, it's just about. I think it's. You know, just make sure you, you know, you using that time because mm -hmm. it, you're going to go into the market like in, in soon. Yeah. Right. So what about parties, man? Cause I, I think, <laughs> <laughs> what about that? What about the party parties, time? Man? What about Friday, Saturday night? Hey, do, don't need to go to all parties, right? Like, yeah. Uh, well, maybe okay. one, one a month. Every other week. <laughs> Every other weekend. No, but I, I think that I, I, I understand like how some you uh, some universities are not that great right right now yeah. um i'm not gonna name them but <laughs> some some you know i i have friends you know like other friends like even from from florida and me they were like oh you know it's not you know it's not the greatest thing and blah blah and it's like and but in but students shouldn't rely just on their teachers you know or okay. in their university i mean they can't yeah exactly i think the the course is there to kind of make maybe put you in the you know in the mindset like everybody's doing that so everybody helps each other but you just, mm -hmm. still should like um like you know uh, like uh, 
go after things yourself, you know, right. like try to get better yourself. I mean, the, the teacher will always help you, but right. like school should be the push behind yeah, you, yeah, but, you, but you, you should be really driving hundred percent on them and just, Oh, I'm, 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 you know, I'm going out like, you know, uh, the class is done. So I'm, I'm now just going to play soccer and party, you know, I was like, right. Um, well said you should always like, I, I don't know. I, I, when I was in college, even like being, not not being character artist stuff or even game artist stuff like on game on graphic design i always i always treat every like homework as you know the projects that we had to do every mm -hmm. semester or thing like that i always treat them as like i you know i have i would try to do this as the, the best as i can you know yeah always like mm -hmm. every time yeah regardless so, of whether or not it was exactly what you wanted to do, right? Well, or regardless that if it's not like a, a, a you know, like a professional work or if it's not a real thing, mm -hmm. that's when you are training. So yeah, true. Yeah, very true. So what about you know once you're in, once you're in, like how do you, you you are unique in that I think you stayed in a spot and grew. Whereas I know other artists who like jump from studio to mm. studio every mm. five months or something, <laughs> and that's how they grow. So can you speak a little bit to like your approach to that and what, and what that's like? Uh, yeah, when I was coming up, I was told the same thing. It's yeah. like, you got to jump ship every year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> jump yeah. ship. That's what they, that's yeah. what they, that's what they're preaching nowadays. Yeah. At yeah. The, the, the classes? Yeah. I had, a, the... I had a class seriously a month ago. And a guy came in, he's like, I've worked 15 jobs since I got out of school three years ago, and now I'm making over 100000 a year. Yep. And he's like, and it's only because I jumped every three months. And I was like, oh, that's stressful. Yeah. Huh. But then I see someone like you who, like, now you're a lead, and you've, you've been loyal to one company, and it seems like that's also a valuable road of doing things. You know what I mean? So should so, we quit? Yeah. <laughs> I guess what we're asking is, when do I put in my two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good question. I mean, maybe it's too good for uh, what we're trying to do. <laughs> we'll believe this part out. <laughs> I mean, no, I, uh, I, I had, I, for some time I had that, that mentality. I think I, I, I thought I would be jumping from, you know, I would stay here to like two years, then another two years in another company. And, and I think the, yeah, that, I think that comes from, the you know from the type of industry that game industry is right mm -hmm. there's a lot of there's a lot of movement for sure yeah uh, uh, for me it was uh, it was a combination like you know of you i mean you have to find the right opportunity in the right place in the right time sure right so it, it could go either way yeah i saying. mean sometimes there's a good opportunity but it's not in the right time or it's not in the right place and yeah. and also like when you there's there's definitely a lot of opportunities i think in other places like europe mm -hmm. uh like the east coast as well europe has a lot but i mean but the, the the thing about west the west coast is that it's more dense right there's more yeah. opportunities like near each other here yeah. that's kind of what makes uh, USA, um, um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's about like, also like, the, you know, if the company that, uh, is, is giving you the opportunities, is, is what you want. I mean, you know, sometimes people come to you and mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily, necessarily what you want. And sometimes you want to go to some place, but it doesn't work out. Yeah. So, well, say I want to go to the Enrique Road and I want to stick to a company for a while. How would I start working my way up there? <laughs> I know this is a bit of an awkward question because you're like my lead as well. <laughs> but say you're, yeah, you're this mid-level artist. You want to stay at a company. Are you focusing on exactly the same skills that you did when you were trying to move into the industry and you're just working on the technical stuff? Or are you starting to look at the politics of the company and you're looking at, okay, I want to get better at the tech side of it. Or do you choose one of those things and focus on it? Try to do them all. Uh, it's a, um, a good question. Um, I don't know. I, uh, 
I wasn't thinking too much about it when I started here. You know, I, um, I already, I already started in Somnia, I guess, as senior, right? So oh. I didn't really have to, like... Three years of senior, folks. <laughs> That's pretty that crazy. Is fast. Pretty fast. <laughs> that sounds fast. <laughs> <laughs> so your first, your first job in Florida, yeah. you were, like, associate or ju- some, a junior-level position, I'm assuming? Or did you start higher? Um, yeah, that's interesting. In the first studio, they didn't really hire me as a as a junior. I didn't have a junior title. I think I just had a character title. Okay. Yeah. And I then don't know, maybe. Okay, but like, so that probably transitioned the second one. You you obviously move up a little bit, right? Because you yeah. now have some experience. Yeah. So, it seems to me that three jobs to get to seniors fast. How did you do that? I mean. <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it it happens. Like I in the first studio, uh, yeah, I, I was a character artist, and uh, until until the studio got shut down, <laughs> and then uh, it's highs and lows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, uh, I mean, the next in the next studio, I I basically was. I know it sounds crazy, but I. And I, I went to the second one. Already, I got hired as a senior artist. Wow! <laughs> In the second one, wow! I don't know. Uh, it might it might it might have been uh, because of like the east the east coast and mm. how they they have like problems lower standards. Yeah, is that what you're talking about <laughs> maybe That's where I'm from. No, no, no. Cut cut that from the. <laughs> I, I think I heard yeah yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. right. <laughs> well, I don't, well, how can I explain? Right? It's like uh, I mean, they definitely have more hard, harder, like hard time attracting talent sure. there, mm-hmm. right? So like, yeah, it's a different culture. Or they're different. Yeah. Companies. So when some when there's somebody with already some some experience and and, and you know they and, and they can get that person, uh, you know they you already get some kind of, you know you go, you already go up a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I was uh, attractive uh, for that second studio because I had industry uh, experience outside of, you know, because most, I guess most of the people there were, they started there, I don't know, mm-hmm. um, you know, fresh out of college and stuff. Yeah. And, and uh, well, one year, and then one, one year later in that same studio, I got promoted to lead wow. there. In that studio, nice, right, nice, yeah. Um, I'm not trying to to say that you know it's like it, it was. It's definitely different, different like standards, right, between like what kind of studio that was and what kind of studio Somnik is, and mm-hmm. uh, but it, it, I mean it helped. It helped with to you know to you know to grow as a professional. For, yeah, for sure. Like having that experience early, you know, it was definitely something helpful yeah. to to for that, you know, you know, going up in the ladder. Yeah. Uh, then when I moved here, I, you know, I, I moved, I, I went from from the lead position I had there to a senior position here. Got. Which is, for me was fine. Sure. Yeah. So it's, I mean, like you said, it's a different studio here than what you know was going on there. Yeah. Probably so. Yeah, and then the, I mean, yeah, and then I, I basically been working, you know, like, uh, you know, hard, I guess, to make sure, like, to, you know, to get to this, uh, you know, this position. Yeah. Um, definitely, I've, lately, I mean, I think in the last two or um, two years, I've for sure, and on, after we started working on uh, Spider-Man, I focusing more on uh, uh, on like you know leading you know improvements and things that you know could benefit the team and not just like myself you know benefit the game benefit the team and uh, just start trying to influence uh, overall well, and that loops back to the first question I was asking about these other experiences that you've had because you now wear multiple hats. You're not just the technical guy. You're not just the artist who gets tasked with different characters. 
you are now leading a team. You're giving feedback to people. Mm -hmm. You are making sure that the the culture of the team stays positive and Mm -hmm. people aren't pissed off at each other. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just interesting to see you having to develop those skills just as much as any of your professional art sides as well. Mm. And those are, it's a lot of different skill sets that you have to have when you get to that level. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what kind of keeps you, you know, alive and curious now? Like what are you, (laughs) are you focused a lot more on the leadership aspect of it? Or are there aspects of art that you're still really curious and excited about exploring? Uh, yeah, there, there are things I am curious and excited about, uh, but I'm more, ex- but I mean, in, ter- in terms of wanting to see that happening instead of like actually, you know, put my hands on. Mm. Uh, oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So like, I'm not so worried too much about uh, actually, you know, put my hands on and doing myself. Uh, I mean, I still can, could do it for sure. could try, but I'm more interested in, in, in seeing those things happening in the game. Is that a hard transition for you to make? Because a lot of us have, like, especially when we're starting out, it's like, we want to, it's like, it's my thing. I want to craft this. It's like the game design thing. Like, you know, you want to be the idea guy, but you also want to be controlling over the whole thing. Did that just sort of naturally develop into this? Yeah, I want like the whole team to put this vision together. Or did you have to at some point just say, okay, I've got to just trust these guys are going to be able to uh, complete this vision. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's something you have to do when you become a lead or whenever you you go into a management uh, role, lead director or whatever. You have to trust people that you are managing, right? Otherwise, yeah. it doesn't work. Yeah, um, it is a tr- is it is it, there is a transition phase. You know, there's a you know a because you you have to learn to let go as well um uh and i'm definitely going through that <laughs> no nice currently going through it <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but that yeah that, i think you you need to have a balance between like uh how much you know how much to let go and how much to like make sure like and, and how much to keep still like under like your let's say quote unquote like control so it's not so it's not just like, you know, like whatever happening there, you know, um, but, uh, you yeah. study a lot of like business books now too, or you like, you have like a stack of those on your <laughs> nightstand. Nice not, not that much. No, no. Not, not that far yet. But, just take uh, the experience. <laughs> <it comes. laughs> but, uh, what, yeah, it, when, yeah. What excites you on the art side then? Like, are there new things you're drawing inspiration from? Are there, like games you're excited about now? The you know, just things that you want. Or to just see? You, you, or I mean, just a new like new uh, methods, new techniques, or yeah, new I mean, things, are those new uh, technologies or right? More yeah, new technologies as well. I mean, are you like I? I can't wait until AI starts like doing all my <laughs> technology. <laughs> or, yeah, I, I think a lot of us are excited about that. Yeah, I can't wait um, until I, I draw things and AI just turns into 3D. Yeah, make right. 3D button. <laughs> right, Take make my abs. <laughs> um, it's a good. Yeah, it's it's just like what what are you curious about? What are you excited about artistically? Hmm. Um, just curious when you get to this level of like with all of your skills leading a team i mean you can now execute such a large vision with that but you're also you've seen a lot of different games come out a lot of different movies yeah um i mean i guess i don't know we always look into i guess how to make everything better right so uh you know, hair, skin, this thing is like, you know, I guess people here are already doing that a lot, uh, which is pretty mm-hmm. cool to see. Um, so, um, I always thought that, uh, you know, like displacement would be a thing, <laughs> like tessellation and displacement, like, but it never really happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was one thing I was excited about. I was like, I was like thinking like, oh, 
I can't can't wait until you can uh, start using like displacement and stuff and yeah, like a film workflow in games, sort of. Yeah, yeah. No, because I remember like some time ago, like seeing like this new technology where there's like uh, dynamic distillation that's mm -hmm. based on height, like height textures and mm -hmm. things we get like, uh, you know, they will get high poly and they're displaced as close as the, you know, as they get close to the camera and they, as they get far from the camera, they optimize automatically. But yeah. I know that was a long time ago and never really happened. Yeah. So. If they find different ways of doing things, right? That may not be the same, but they have good effects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I remember, uh, like at Noman, there was def there was the people who were film artists and they use nothing but displacement and all that <laughs> and their stuff looked amazing uh -huh. and then I'm trying to get it all in like my 4k map or whatever <laughs> on my game character and I'm like man when is it going to look like that <laughs> yeah. is it ever going to look like that I don't know uh it's cool, pretty close it's getting closer yeah. it's getting way closer yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um oh, I had a question I was going to ask like okay oh so like I guess to build off of your question when I'm going through, or like what excites me, and I'm not trying to like uh, pander to you, but honestly, like when I was in school, I was looking at your art station and going like, I'm excited to do that level of work. Mm. So then once you get to that level of work, do you find yourself still like thirsty to, to hit the next level? Or do you feel like now you're trying to branch out and you're maybe not going specifically towards like, I'm excited to try to make another, uh, for example, like your Oh, I wanna, I'm going to mess it up again. <laughs> is it Sonia or is it Cassie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. You got it. This time. Yeah, you got it right. It's Sonia, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Another yeah. Sonia blade. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. I got it that time. <laughs> if you guys haven't checked that out, that's an incredible yeah. art piece. We'll have that in the show notes. So, it's like, really you great. you tackle Sonia blade and you execute it awesomely. So then are you then looking to do something completely different from Sonia blade or are you trying to look to do something similar but do it better? Oh, um... I, I I think let's see I I, uh, I think I I would try to do uh, yeah I would try to do something different just to like change it up yeah you know like because when you when you do I I don't know that's might be just I don't know, just me but like when you do that kind of thing it's like it's you know it's uh it kind of burns you out a little bit mm -hmm. in, with those like with that specific like. Uh, art style a little bit sure there's a lot of detail a lot of things to you know to worry about to get sure uh, get right and i guess when you go to the next one i you just you want to i would want to do something different uh you know style style yeah yeah okay not necessarily you know cartoony but like something that uh yeah it's a bit more refreshing to to the mind you know? right right and then maybe after that or you, then you go back to something that's similar so uh, so you don't get burned now, I think. Yeah. I also like, I think I, t I, I told you, we talked about that a little bit, but um, whenever I, I, I told you, like whenever I would do like uh, realistic stuff mm -hmm. here in Somnec, I would try right. to do something a little bit more like stylized in uh, at home. And when I was working on, on Ratchet, like I would also like try to work on something more realistic at home because right. I mean, you're already doing the, that one thing. Yeah, in the in at work, like so, just trying to balance yeah. your home. Unless, home yeah, life. unless you unless there's something that you're trying to, like do it, like a research, right? And mm -hmm. then you want mm -hmm. like for for that you can actually use for work, right? So, uh, so in, in that case, I would definitely uh, try it's the same style, maybe you know, the same sure. techniques, uh, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Do you okay. always have projects you're working on on the side? Because one thing that a lot of people who transition from being students into professionals, it's like we start working during the day and then we just stop doing all of our, our personal projects. Yeah. Did you just like bust out Sonya in a couple weekends and then no. you just don't do anything? <laughs> <laughs> do you find yourself working on personal projects a lot then? Or how do you kind of balance it? Well, that one took a long time for sure. I couldn't tell, like, because it was like it was on and like on and off. Yeah, it's all split uh, up. Yeah, and yeah. Um, but are you trying? Are you asking like after you 
after you graduate or, or yeah, like just in it, general? I mean, a lot of people just kind of stop doing their personal projects on the side. And then sometimes you'll get hit with a flash of inspiration and you'll mm. do something like Sonya Blade. And then do you find yourself just taking your foot off the pedal and you're not doing any personal projects for a while? Or do you always have something that you're kind of chipping away at on the side? Right. Uh, I can't say always. Uh, definitely. I, I think when I was leaving here in the United States alone, like by myself, I mean, with roommates, but like, when I say that, I mean, without my wife, mm -hmm. uh, I definitely had more time to do my <laughs> personal work. <laughs> so I, like, in Sorry, the, she's a great gal. <laughs> <laughs> so like in Florida, when I was in Florida, um, in the first two, three years, I would still do a lot of like personal work, even after work. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would still like stay late and, and you know, get like few pieces. I, I, I would still, I, I was still working on, on, on some like indie game mm. uh, in mm. my free time as well. That's cool. And I think, I don't know, to me, I, it was, it was always like, even, even though I was hired, I was like working in the industry. I was, I always felt like that my, uh, you know, that my portfolio still needed more. Yeah. And I couldn't rely just on the work I was doing for work. Right, because who knows when you can put that in your portfolio. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and I, and, uh, and they ended, like, I, I ended up putting, like, a few things. I actually have one thing from that first studio, just one thing. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, get more, uh, you know, uh, my portfolio in a better position, uh, even working on the studio already in the beginning. And then, like... Um, yeah, and then like things started to like they gradually. I mean, at least to me, they gradually like started to like like go down in terms of, like how much how much time I was spending mm -hmm. on personal stuff because like mm -hmm. then you, then you go into you know my wife came and I had to you know definitely you know uh, give uh, more more attention and um, and and then the insomniac as well like. Uh, there's a lot. There were there was a lot more like responsibilities as well mm. in terms of work. So when you go home, it's you you already kind of a little burned out. So, yeah. but I yeah I I still do a little sometimes whenever I can. It's just it's, it's just it doesn't take you know it doesn't take a month or two anymore to do a right. It takes like six months. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. Yeah, it really. takes a while. <laughs> yeah. So when you, I mean, when you do, if you were to go home tonight and have a sudden burst of inspiration, is it just pop open ZBrush and start sculpting something? Are you modeling? Sometimes, or, yes. Okay, yeah. so it's just, that's the stuff that you still enjoy is like, like on your free time, you can still do a sculpt or model a cool like sci-fi thing and stuff just like that. Wake up in the middle of the night, flash of inspiration from the <laughs> computer. <laughs> Not that I I have a, I have a few like pieces that are ongoing. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I feel that I'm never gonna never gonna finish them because yeah, it's like you always you always get excited when you start it, right? And you do the block out and stop, <laughs> and you're like, fuck, man, I have to. Yeah. <laughs> if I want to post this, I have to do like super clean, like super polished, and do all that process. Like, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta outsource it, man. <laughs> right? Just outsource work. your personal yeah, outsourcing. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to do that. <laughs> be I would awesome. love that. Find an intern. Imagine, imagine if that ever happens in the game industry, it would be like a, it would be a scandal. Yeah, you know, right. right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like how the celebrities getting scandals because they do something like it's like not really the equivalent work. of lip syncing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it. like paying people to. Make stuff for you so you can post on your profile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would not go over well. Um, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned portfolios, though, because uh, one of the things that drew me to want to work at Insomniac was that, like, through the gamut of the games that, that have been made here, it's every style imaginable from, like, realism with Spider-Man to, like, hard, stylized sci-fi with Ratchet, right? Mm -hmm. So... And one of the questions I had coming out of school was like, what do I gear my portfolio towards if I like, if I'm interested in doing the yeah. whole gamut? Because some, some people would tell me, just do realism. That's all anybody wants to see. And then other people are like, yeah, but if you want to work stylized, you have to have stylized work. Yeah. 
So yeah. like, what would you what would you say to those kind of people of, who like the gamut or gearing a portfolio for today's game industry? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> a, tentative, a tentative look at it. Uh. 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 Uh, you guys have a lot of trick questions. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this is what we wanted to know. <laughs> uh, Some stuff. So yeah, no, I already got that question before, and I I would say. It like some people they you know let's say they want to like uh, go to you know they want to oh I want to work at Blizzard right right oh I know and definitely if, I guess I, if you want to work on Blizzard I guess you you really need to be like I guess like, it's like, extremely good or you have to nail down their style right right because they're gonna look at that I think I don't know how they work exactly but that's that's the feeling I got um, yeah. But and then if you focus and then let's say you focus that on that right and then you don't get it right? mm-hmm. and then like you, you and then you have to maybe go to another studio but that that's not their style mm-hmm. and you, all all you have in your portfolio is that yeah <laughs> you kind of put your eggs in one basket yeah yeah because a, a lot of uh, well yeah so it's always definitely good to uh, you know diversify your portfolio between realistic and stylized it's yeah because you need i i don't know at, at least for me is you need to uh, it's i think it's a good thing to keep your options open right you know if you just focus one thing too much i mean as i guess as long as it's it's it's, it's as long as it's great right right <laughs> it's true yeah i mean uh as long as it's great, you can you can probably get a job in different companies, right? So it doesn't yeah. matter if it's stylized. Uh, I mean, obvious, obviously there are things that are way too stylized for certain studios to even like to uh, you know to evaluate. You mm-hmm. know, if you could do something else, but um, yeah, I guess uh, I think the most important thing is just qual- is quality. You know, and you know presentation regardless what are you you doing so okay yeah it's a good point yeah in some way like you said it's like there's like multiple styles so yeah if you if you, a person that's just doing can only do stylized and you're gonna have a hard time with realistic then might not be a good fit here yeah because you need for, we need people for every different different styles right sure. we have like stormland and we have like uh you know Spider-Man and, and Ratchet and like you know I know like who knows Resistance and yeah. things that we were already done like Sunset Overdrive was like just, it was different like another type of style as well so That's true uh, yeah who knows what you're gonna need in the future right yeah there's no way of telling it's definitely one of the things that keeps it interesting being here yeah of why we don't want to just jump ship. Yeah. Is that is that part of why you stayed for so long? Is because you were like, oh, they keep giving me new things to do, like different ways of working. Not necessarily, no. No. Uh, and like I said, I think the a big part of, of like why I've stayed so long was like it was basically like. I you know it's good here. Uh, it's actually yeah it's actually a good studio that that can't complain about too much uh and uh you know it's it's you know it's about the opportunities like in the location too so yeah it's a good location yeah (laughs) yeah so cool well boys we're coming up on our time but i know it burns (laughs) by we had a couple different things we want to run over with our uh short news update um, and because this is all visual art stuff, a lot of this will rely on show notes, but we wanted to give mm-hmm. a shout out to, uh, some art station or some artwork that had come up and this one is on art station. A lot of us were talking about these real time hands that were done by James Busby. You see that? Is that a name right? Or, uh, 1024. Yeah. 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 Those were, those were crazy. Oh, yeah. Blowing our minds. <laughs> that was crazy. So if you guys haven't checked that one out, that'll be in the show notes. Definitely give those a look. 
Um, I was also, I want to get your take on this, guys. I've been uh, checking out ArtStation Learning a little bit because I realized that it was already included in my ArtStation Pro account. Mm-hmm. This is going to totally sound like they're sponsoring this uh, podcast, which <laughs> they are not. But I was really surprised with it. And it, it just kind of reminded me again of that age old question of is school worth it? Because now you have this curated library of up to date. Uh, professional tutorials Mm -hmm. and they're pretty pretty tight they're They're pretty pretty awesome yeah yeah what do they have on there everything they've got everything and they're pumping out more tutorials every week there's a lot on there so yeah if you guys haven't checked it out yet i mean i'd be interested in getting your takes on it later but no i haven't i haven't seen yet no i mean i've seen like you know the like banners yeah notification and things about it but I mean, even for me, like just brushing up on like old fundamental stuff, like I'll Mm -hmm. jump in and watch some 2D concept stuff or some character design 2D things. And like, oh, yeah, like, oh, this color theory video or it's just something to put on while you're cooking or you know just hanging out. Right. (laughs) It's it's pretty cool stuff. And because it is curated uh, and at least right now, it's all super up to date. I was impressed. Cool. It was pretty sweet. Yeah. And I mean, that's just one of many resources online. I bet if you were motivated enough through just tutorials online, you might be able to teach yourself how to do enough yeah, no, to get a I, job, yeah, it's, right? It's, yeah. What's your take? <laughs> What's your take on it? Because well, you had also mentioned the importance of having the community around you to push you yeah, and yeah, possibly a network. Yeah, no, that. but that's, that's – I was thinking about that. Sometimes I think about that because, like, now – I guess nowadays you have, like, so much content on the internet. It's crazy. Yeah. And, like, when I started, it's like – there was it wasn't that much yeah so i was uh, i was still reading like you know books and even <laughs> the, the manual oh, for, yeah. for no, 3ds yeah. max the, right? yeah, the, yeah the help the help document yeah. for 3ds max that's how i i started learning like every single tool like oh you press this <laughs> or you move to it you, you uh you move the time slider and now you have a a ball that animates you know yeah like, but that's that's that that's tried you, and true method of learning something is well, just you open learn the help patience. docs. Like that's why you're probably so patient at learning things now. Like if I can't pick up something right away, if I can't find the up to date YouTube video, I'm like, ah, screw it. I don't even need this tool. <laughs> if you're used to flipping through a Bible for 3ds Max six, then I mean, yeah you just have incredible patience compared to yeah. somebody like me. I mean, I didn't really <laughs> go through the Bible, but I, I know it was a thing back in the day, like yeah. 3DS Max Bibles, you know, yeah. they would go through everything. It was, wow. Yeah. I but remember like, at Noman, they had the alien wavefront, like textbooks or whatever they were that came with it. And it was like a encyclopedia of like 16 volumes this wide <laughs> sat on, on the table. And I was like, did someone read that? Who reads that? <laughs> A what a three D encyclopedia or it was, yeah it was uh it was before Maya it was like they were called Alien Wavefront or something oh, okay. like that so it was basically the original Maya help docs but they were the physical books oh my god and there was like sixteen of them <laughs> and they stacked this wide and they had them in one of the classrooms and I was like wow and now we're spending a bunch of money just for someone to tell it to us <laughs> <laughs> yeah. give me the cliff notes yeah yeah it's crazy though no yeah there's so much options out there. Mm-hmm. Um, like even free. I mean, if you if you are you know if you if you are like uh, you know if you if you search enough you, and and you have to, I mean if you want to spend the time searching right you can always find something. No. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I remember some of those tutorials that I bought on Gumroad. Again, not free, but we're talking about maybe ten to twenty dollars max. And then if you're a cheap student, and I, I really don't like sharing those things, but if you have like your one close friend that you'll share this with, yeah. you're talking about the price of a sandwich, basically, for mm-hmm. something like, I in remember LA, yeah. Grissetti's, yeah, in LA especially, <laughs> Grissetti's first, uh, his anatomy tutorial, and just, you know, it's hours of incredible video, I've mm. rewatched them so many times, and you're talking about like $20 mm, yeah, and yeah. the amount of value I got out of that was so much more than probably any class that I took. Yeah. I will say that the value of feedback is the one thing That's that priceless. kind of balances it out. Cause it's like, yeah, you can follow no, those tutorials, true. but if you don't have someone telling you if you're doing it right or doing it wrong, yeah. you no, can I, easily find yourself in a rabbit hole. Yeah, that's true. I, I, 
I always wished I I had I, I could go I could go to a class mm -hmm. like like even like when I was going to graphic design I was like and and learning things on the side I was like fuck I wish I could uh, you know have somebody to exchange ideas or talk to or have like yeah. people trying to uh, and like like guide me somehow or right. give instructions because that probably like would like speed up my learning you know yeah so that I think yeah I think that colleges are not they're not worthless you just you just have to know how to get the most of, out of it you know and uh, not worthless but worth 200k I don't know. <laughs> that is the million know. dollar question right there <laughs> yeah yeah I mean I got a lot out of my school I, I wouldn't have traded that experience for anything but yeah it is a massive price tag yeah so Crazy that's uh, that's uh, that's another conversation. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. For next time. <laughs> for next time was. Well. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, well, since you guys are talking about things, uh, uh, learning things, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but I I I joined like the this website called the Mentor Coalition. The Mentor Coalition. Yeah. Oh, that sounds so, awesome. And I'm one of the mentors there. Uh, uh, if you guys want to. Put yeah. it out there as well. Yeah, it's yeah, totally. out there right now. Let's I mean, it. it might be, uh, you know, it might be useful for somebody. You yeah. Know, it's like, so what are you doing? Like, is it like a tutorial type of thing or people can ask you questions? No, it's, yeah, it's like a live, it's a live one-on-one. Wow. Uh, wow. Com, uh, you know, like a hands-on thing that, you know, we, we, we do together, you know, just one-on-one. Uh, and there's, they also get, they also, they also get access to this, uh, uh, Discord uh, oh, okay. group. Nice. Cool. Nice. I think for a lifetime, but uh, the 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 mentorship is 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 it's basically just like a like six hours in total, things like that. But super cool. Well, yeah, it sounds wow. like the kind of thing that Enrique from back in his school years would have jumped yeah, right on. Yeah. <laughs> Get some one on one time with a pro like you. Mm -hmm. That's an the value of a mentor deal. is huge. I could I would say if you used like just online resources and had something like the mentor. Uh, that's all one more need. time uh, uh, mentor, mentor coalition. coalition yeah if you had something like that and all the online resources that's almost as good as school it could be it could be <laughs> under the right we're not doing our schools any justice I know in this conversation but that definitely <laughs> sounds <laughs> that sounds like an amazing oh because okay, yeah, there's really a lot cool. of things that I don't know if like schools like you know the tra your traditional school like art institute and uh, I don't know other schools they, I don't know if they teach things that you know about the industry you know that yeah, right. professionals that are in the industry that can like you know provide mentorship can you know like actually this is the latest and greatest knowledge that you're yeah getting. I mean right. yeah I just don't know if they do so like that's that's when like you know uh, getting this kind of uh, relation with somebody that can give you feedback on the latest industry standards can help. Right. So, yeah. I would have hopped right on that. Yeah. That sounds amazing. Because really. you were saying, oh, yeah, like, I, you know, definitely watching a video about anatomy helps, but uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that we do in the game studio that is, it goes beyond about, goes beyond just sculpting, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and ZBrush. So, and then the more you know, you know, you're ahead of the, the crowd, I guess. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Totally. That sounds very valuable yeah, yeah we'll definitely cool. include that in the show notes too cool man well we're so stoked to have a guy like you on our very first real episode so yeah. thank you so much for joining us yeah thank you yeah, do you have anything sure. else you Thanks. want to add uh no 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 it's no. cool man it's great yeah yeah i think what, what you guys are doing is it's awesome uh Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you. we hope to have you on another time. This is no, just sure. a fun just, conversation. This was just the first part. Exactly. Right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Enrique part one. Enrique and, part uh, one. Enrique part this one. Ten part Enrique series. <laughs> <laughs> There's more to talk about. Who knows the future? Yeah. Yeah, man. No, I feel like we could keep talking for hours, but. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We'll probably just start recording our lunchtime conversations and throwing up on the web. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Real. If you guys haven't already, check out Enrique's art station. Uh, we'll have it in the show notes, but I can speak from personal experience say that like just looking at something like that, you can get pretty far just by comparing what you're doing to that. So check it out, guys. All right. 
That's a wrap. All yeah. right. Until next time. Yeah. All right. Hey there, this is Colton. I hope you enjoyed that very first episode of Shape Language. We're really excited to bring you more of these episodes shortly. Uh, I was just online checking out this mentor coalition that Enrique was talking about, and holy cow, I wish I had this when I was back in school. Six hours of one-on-one calls with the man, the myth, the legend, full high-to-low process for your characters, and all the top tips and tricks that we're using in the industry right now. If I wanted to get my foot in the door and I was willing to work hard, this is the opportunity that I would take. It's so much less expensive than college, and you're actually working with a guy who does this every day at the top of his game. So go check this out. We'll have a link to it in the show notes, along with all the other resources and artwork that we talked about in this episode. We'd also love to hear your feedback on the first episode, so please write us any comments or suggestions on who you'd like to hear from next. Until next time, this is Colton from Shape Language, signing out.